the electromagnetic spectrum. Now we are looking at all wavelengths of light. Not just what we can see with our eyes, but wavelengths much shorter than we can see with our eyes to much longer than we can see with our eyes. So we're going to start with the very shortest wavelengths. And those are called gamma rays. So as you can see, these are the shortest wavelength, which means these are also the highest energy. So these are produced in very high energy situations. So the picture is showing what's called a gamma ray burst. GRB for short. And these are still being figured out. Here we see where the burst is occurring. Here we see the same object shortly after. So it's a very short-lived event. But we think these are exploding stars. Or it could be merging black holes. There's all sorts of possibilities that could produce a gamma ray burst. Now gamma rays can also be produced here on Earth uh, primarily by nuclear bombs. The radiation that is associated with death by nuclear weapons is gamma rays. So here we're talking about wavelengths of light that can kill you. Um, what we will find is the shorter the wavelength, the more deadly it is. So gamma rays are the deadliest. Now fortunately, our atmosphere blocks gamma rays from outside of the Earth. And I'm going to use the Greek symbol for gamma, for gamma rays. So we don't have to worry about gamma rays attacking us from outer space. We just need to worry about people on this one. Slightly shorter wavelength, or I'm sorry, but slightly longer wavelength, uh, slightly lower energy than gamma rays are x-rays. And here we have an image of x-rays. Um, we have to have special telescopes to see all of these wavelengths that our eyes don't detect. So here we have using an x-ray telescope. Uh, we are actually seeing material falling into a black hole. So one of the ways we detect black holes is by looking for x-ray radiation. Now this is the same as, you know, at your doctor's office. Or at the dentist. Um, it's not going to kill you instantly, but can be harmful. Uh, too many x-rays can lead to tumors and things like that. Uh, again, it's blocked by our atmosphere. So we, again, don't have to worry about x-rays from space killing us. But, you know, if you're prone to broken bones all in the same place and you keep getting the same thing x-rayed over and over again, uh, there is the potential for tumors. So, again, man-made stuff you have to watch out for. Ultraviolet light, our abbreviation of ultraviolet, UV. Um, so now we're even lower energy, longer wavelength than x-ray. This is our sun. Our sun gives off ultraviolet light. This is what gives you a tan. Or sunburn. Or skin cancer. So, um, 
again, not going to kill you instantly like gamma rays, won't give you tumors like x-rays, but it does have the potential for causing cancer. So all of these short wavelength, you know, shorter than visible, are harmful. It's just a matter of degrees as far as how harmful. Um, our ozone layer blocks some ultraviolet light, but not all. So uh, wear your sunscreen, and for Pete's sake, do not use a tanning bed, because tanning beds are highly correlated with skin cancer. So those things will kill you. Don't use them. Now we're to the visible spectrum. So obviously this is what our eyes can see. And our atmosphere is transparent to the visible spectrum. Here we see Jupiter in a visible image. So, um, as far as ground-based astronomy is concerned, uh, visible light is the first wavelength we've encountered that we can really observe from the ground. We don't have to put a telescope in orbit outside of our atmosphere. And it's the first one that's not in the least bit deadly or harmful. So from now on we're dealing with safe wavelengths of light. Infrared. Infrared is often what we associate with as heat. When you feel heat coming off of a fire, what you are doing is detecting infrared radiation. Um, so here we're looking at objects that glow from heat. Now you and I do that, which is why the military uses goggles that pick up infrared light and then translate that into a visible image. Here we are seeing a planet around another star. It's too faint to see optically. This is the star. This is the planet. Um, but in infrared, because planets are heated up by their stars, in this case this star is heating it up, we can see that planet in the infrared part of the spectrum. So infrared, again, is blocked by our atmosphere, um, especially water in our atmosphere. So if you have a very dry location, very high altitude, uh, you can do infrared observations from ground, uh, but it does need to be you know, like a mountain top in a very dry place. Otherwise, we go to orbiting observatories for infrared observing as well. Microwaves. So now we're looking at you know, very low energy, long wavelength. And these are the same as your microwave oven. Um, these are also absorbed by water, which is actually how your microwave works. It's the water in your food absorbing the microwaves that makes your food get hot, which is why sometimes certain foods they recommend wrapping in a damp paper towel because the food itself doesn't have enough water content. The picture you're looking at is the heat left over from the Big Bang. The Big Bang was a very hot event, but since then our universe has expanded and cooled, 
and this is what's left of it. So this is actually an all-sky view of the entire universe and what's left of that initial heat. Longest wavelength, lowest energy, radio waves. So uh, this is, you know, what your radio and TV stations broadcast at. But that doesn't mean this is light, um, or rather sound. It is still a light wave. It's just, um, in the case of radio and TV broadcasts, they have embedded on that wave uh, extra information that is then translated by your radio or your television into sounds and images. Our picture is actually a combination of optical, so this is part of the visible spectrum, this is a galaxy, and then radio. So this is a galaxy that uh, shoots off material and we can see these uh, jets and lobes around galaxies using radio waves. Radio is also good for uh, detecting hydrogen. Hydrogen gives off radio waves, especially when it's in very large clouds. So we use radio telescopes to pick up radio waves. These we can do from ground. Uh, you see very large radio dishes on the ground uh, because our atmosphere is relatively transparent to radio waves. So these are all the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum and going from highest energy with gamma rays, then x-rays, then ultraviolet light, then visible light, down to our very low energy forms of light, infrared, microwaves, and radio waves make up the entire electromagnetic spectrum.